Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Roll Wise Podcast, where we talk about tabletop RPGs and other adjacent topics. Today, we are going to be uh, reminiscing on our experience playing the game Cloud Empress, a ecological science fiction fantasy game that is inspired by uh, animations like Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind, um, but is then built on the mothership rule system. Uh, it was produced uh, by the creator Worlds by Watt, and uh, I'd say that we had a hell of a time. So this in this episode, we're going to talk about the game Cloud Empress, what our feelings about it and everything like that. We're going to talk about the last voyage of the Bean Barge, the starter adventure uh, that you can find um, to kind of get you going in the world of the hereafter and everything like that. And then, of course, uh, just kind of an obligatory, obligatory spoiler alert, uh, just in case you or you or have any plans or plan to play at a table where they're playing The Last Voyage of the Bean Barge. Uh, we just want to uh, go ahead. And really, it was a spoiler way ahead of time if you listen to the uh, title of the game. The, yeah, if, like you, if you know the game is The Last Voyage of the Bean Barge, I mean... You can expect some shenanigans may happen on you the can. Bean Barge. You can. And I, I can say, before we get into it, Holy crap, did we have a fun time playing the adventure? Lots it was of laughs. a lot of fun. It was lots of crazy. It was almost it was almost too much fun, he says, because I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. So whatever. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, one, of the things <laughs> I, one, of, one of the things I think that's interesting about one shots is it does give you that freedom of of just kind of doing things because mm -hmm. you're not concerned all the time about playing this character in the next game. So you just kind of do stuff, which is yeah. sometimes is the most fun you can have in a role playing game. It's it's true. It's true. So I, I and I like I said, we had a lot of fun. So we'll talk about it right now. Um, and just you know, before I forget, if you guys really like this type of content, you want to see us break down more games, or you want us to give our impressions or opinions of adventures or um, any any published content, uh, please let us know. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, throw comments in there. We love talking with the people. Uh, Brent is usually in there as our keyboard warrior, taking care of and answering people, uh, both in social media and in our comments. So. Uh, let us know how we're doing and everything like that. And of course, for longtime watchers of the show, uh, Jeff will be coming back soon. Uh, he's still he's still out for right now. So uh, he's still in the penalty box, wound injury box, the, sports the, ball, sport ball. Uh, yes. So uh, we, we we missed the guy, but he'll be back um, obviously uh, when he's able to make it back. Um, but for now, it'll just be the two of us uh, talking about the show. So without further ado, let's talk about Cloud Empress. So first things first, I think that if you've already played Mothership, you're going to you're going to be able to take to Cloud Empress without too much effort because Cloud Empress pretty much uses the same framework. Some of the differences of course they do. They did they did use a heart stat to represent kind of an emotional resilience. Um there is like reality checks to see like um how you cope with the surreal aspects of the world. Um, stress and panic, um, but it's like a little bit different for how from how the mothership game plays. And um, I don't think that they're as lethal when you're in those kind of situations at, per se. And then, of course, in the wounds system, mothership, and this is something we had to talk about, we had to clarify because, uh, you know, wounds in mothership, you know, you have like a higher hit point threshold, but you have lower wounds, where in this one you have a higher wound threshold, but everyone has like 10 hit points kind of thing. But you can have a higher hit point threshold. Like it's a random number mm -hmm. in in Mothership, whereas it's yeah. set in, in yeah. Cloud Empress. Yep. Um, and then of course it still does introduce wounds. So when you do take a wound, you can get a you roll on a table to see how that wound impacts you. But um, as it, but there is a thing called curses in uh, Cloud Empress, whereas once your character dies for the first time, they may miraculously resurrect because of weird cousin realities and things like that. And, <laughs> but and you get cursed, and curses themselves can really just suck. If you haven't read the curses table, I strongly recommend it. Uh, well, and you can get curses a character creation, which happened mm -hmm. to one of our players that made him unplayable the first two times that he made yeah. the character. It just which, it, which was kind of funny and strange. It, it is a little bit weird. And so if you're looking to play one of the four character classes, the courier, the courier seems prone to curses. So, I mean, not to say that it isn't fun to play with a curse right out of the gate, but some of the curses make it more challenging to play like a dedicated one shot to. <laughs> like a ghost that can't interact with anything. Yeah, like uh, your player can't interact. That's that's a lot of fun. 
Um, another difference between Mothership and uh, Cloud Rampers is magic. Uh, and we'll talk about a lot, of, a lot of these things in a little bit of greater detail as we go in, but just kind of highlighting them. Uh, is the game uses something called shock. Uh, it's like a sooty substance, you know, and they put it into sticks and it's basically consumed or crushed and all that stuff to use magic. Um, but I would say magic is pretty negative overall. Like magic is not a glamorous component of the game. Like being a spellcaster in um, in Cloud Empress pretty much means that you're A, young, because there are no old magicians, as, as the book says, um, and B, you're willing to accept after effects. So once you get, once you get your, your cool magical effect, there's usually some lingering things after the fact. And I don't know. There's a magic. I think I didn't look at all the spells. I just looked at the two. I played a magician in the game. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't look at the, all of the spells, but the two spells that I had seemed actually fairly powerful, even at a, even at a cost of one of the, yeah. like, Oh, not to say that they're not cost. powerful. So but... I don't, I, I don't think that it's, I mean, it's, it's harsh in that there's, there's like consequences and different mm -hmm. consequences for each of the spells. But I don't think it's untenable as far as the game's concerned. No, but I'm just saying it's definitely not your D&D, I'm this cool wizard casting fireballs left and right. Because if you did, you would probably burst into flame or something like that. Or you run out of your catalyst chalk. You know, yeah, you, if you, you run out of chalk, you can't cast spells at all. Exactly. And so I think that... Um, you know, I think that in terms of simplicity, you know, anybody that wants to pick up the game can definitely pick up the game and get playing fairly quickly. It's rules um, light. It's super rules light. The, the book is pretty small. It's like, what, 50 60 pages? pages, pages yeah. 60 pages. And the coolest part is, is you can get the book off Drive Through RPG for free, as well as Last Voyage of the Bean Bar. So if you want your table to not have to invest any money and get started on something different, So oh, actually, at least at the time that I did it, it was free. I just downloaded it from Drive Through. So. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a really easy game to pick up, and it was a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. yeah, if you're interested, it's definitely one to be to one to to try. I think. Yeah. So so I guess let's talk a, a little bit about the game and kind of how you felt the game played. So the one thing that was really interesting, and it was it was a a neat component to it is that the game doesn't really want you to roll dice for skill checks. And I, there's a part of my brain that just has players rolling dice because I think I've been trained by D and D so much to just roll dice at random intervals. Yeah. I was like, there's was flavor, like there's flavor rolls as a GM in some games. Like you have those flavor rolls where it's like, Oh sure. Roll, roll some dice to see if you observe anything mm -hmm. different. And then you give them more details or whatever. And this it definitely isn't a game for flavor rules like that. Mm -mm. All of the rules are supposed to be significant and under duress. Yeah, it's like it, in a risky situation, that's when you roll. So if a character wants to do something that carries no risk, they just do it. You know, I mean, with within reason, right? I mean, they can't just like make a wish or something. But you know, if they if they want to, well, yeah, if they want to open up, a you don't door, have a wish skill, so yeah. So if they, but if they want to open a door and there's no rush and there's I mean, they just open, they just get the door open, whether it takes them 10 minutes or 20 minutes, it's irrelevant to the fact that they opened the door. Um, and in Brent's character's case, you know, I mean, he had skills that allowed him to just do things <laughs> like medicine. And yeah, yeah. Like if you have medicine and you're doing like you're examining someone, like unless it's like, I don't know, the person is like, examine me while I have this gun to your head. Like unless it's something like that. Like there really isn't a reason to roll. You just or, kind of do it. Or like a, I mean, a, a reason to roll would be like if a person, it, like your roll hinges on their life or death, right? Like, or if there's a giant bug that's trying to eat the ship and you're mm -hmm. trying to save a person with a severed arm, yep. uh, yeah, that would be your, that would be a situation in which you roll. But because you have the skill, you roll with advantage, so you are better than. Mm -hmm. Why the skills don't have a like they don't add any numerical advantage. They do give you advantage on the skill rolls. Yeah. So which I think is very cool. And it, it is helpful to have advantage because it it still it still felt like with Mothership and Cloud Empress, they there's a lot of skills that were much lower on the D100. So, you know, having advantage is very impactful because some of your skills are maybe in the 30s and 40s. Yeah, uh, your, your attributes are all going to probably be. Well, I think, uh, yeah, I think at 36 is probably about the average, I think is what they said. If you roll, mm -hmm. if you roll average, which you probably won't. Um, yeah. I think my, my character fell fairly solid at, with three thirties and a four, like 40, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I also think I'm the only one that succeeded in any mm -hmm. roles during the game. You, you did like that was, and it was interesting because I, I, 
you know, as I as I kind of quickly realized that you should only really roll in these kind of things, I started having these bifurcations and how the story would go. And I have to have a clear like if they succeed versus if they fail, like how does this how does this story change and everything like that for that? Um, but again, you know, I, it, it does it is one of those things where there's a lot of if if there is a it felt like all the paths that every character took were on the failure path, except for Brent had he did succeed in this case, which was really cool. Um, but in the few roles that we made, like, what would that be? Like 75% of the roles we made meant that we were on a did not succeed path, which mm -hmm. like, which led one of our characters to try to build a, a makeshift bomb to get one of the, the cicadas off the ship and blew up in his hand kind of thing. Cause he, not only did he fail to, to, as a person who had no experience making these types of things, then he critically failed trying to use it, which <laughs> was like, it was just a critical failure on top cherry on top of the situation. So it's like, well, I mean, I was going to, I, I gave him, you know, I kind of, I was like, well, you made basically a improvised explosive device that you don't know if it's going to work. And it was just like, boom, <laughs> you know, it was just, that, it just, that was my first successful medical check in the game was uh, fixing his hand. Yep. So, in you know, so it was, it was interesting to see kind of how that goes, but I think it, it's still, it kind of rubs me the same way that mothership rubs me is that like, I don't know, maybe I'm just one of those people that likes to see players succeed as much as they fail or more. But you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what the sweet spot is. And I'm actually kind of curious what pe other people would think about that. Because I I mean, like I said, we had a 75% failure rate in our game in our game of Cloud Empress. And I think in Mothership, our failure rate was like 95%. <laughs> well, we rolled exceptional, we rolled exceptionally bad. Uh at that and i don't know like mothership is also different because it isn't it isn't advantage or disadvantage like you do get a skill bonus based on how mm -hmm. high like you're less likely to succeed in 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 mothership i think because like it's 10 if you have the skill it's 10 and then if you're have one level in the skill it's 15 um added to your stat i believe versus advantage and cloud empress i think you're more likely to see succeed with advantage than you are with um, the small boost. The, the, the small boost. Hmm. Um, but I will point out again in Mothership, like I think I had a character that had like 50 and then plus 15, and he still rolled like a 90 um and failed. So there was a lot of failure in the Mothership game, just bad luck. Um in Cloud Empress, like I guess the thing to remember is it's in direct like you're under duress. So like mm -hmm. failure when you're under a lot of stress is gonna happen. And again, it's a situation where you really need to like with Mothership. It's a game where you really need to focus on trying to do things that you're good at, not just mm -hmm. kind of coming up with general, like, general things to do. Like, for example, um, and no insult to anybody that we played with in the game, but like our cell sword never attacked anything. And which means he was doing other things that he wasn't good at, like mm -hmm. trying to do medical stuff on the injured, one of the injured people. Yeah. Um, Whereas he should have been on the barge fighting, preferably. Um, fighting the large cicadas that were yeah, like, attaching themselves and trying to eat your chalk. So there was a lot, yeah. So there was a lot of choices that were were questionable in the game where people and, and because I played Mothership before, like that's what I focused on doing with my character. Like mm -hmm. my character was gonna cast spells if he could and do medical stuff if he could like that was what he was focused on mm -hmm. and so that's what i stuck to i was stuck to helping them that's why when we were in a dangerous situation what he did was he ran and got weapons for people he hoped could fight because mm -hmm. he knew he wasn't going to be able to fight the thing sure um so and i think that's with these low with these like you're not a power character mm -hmm. you really need to focus on doing the things that you're good at because you're not going to be generally good at everything mm -hmm. yeah and i think and, and, and it's, it's actually bringing up a good point and i think that that the weird part about mothership is that it's been a very instructive rpg to both play and run in so much as that when you're playing rules like games it kind of was very it, it, was, it was very focused on teaching you those things that are like you sometimes you just have to cut trim the fat from the game and this, when you trim the fat, this is how you tell that kind of story. And there are probably other games that have done that for many years or something. I, I just haven't encountered them. Mm -hmm. But it was very instructive to me in kind of my own learning to be like, I mean, you, Brent could see it on my face when I was like, how do you No, I was going to have you roll, but it just doesn't work here. Like, 
Like having well, you, a role here, like just doesn't work. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it really dawned on me in this game, and and we talked about this a little bit before, but it really dawned me on me in this game too. It really made more sense when it said, you know, basically it's like if you have the skill, they should just do the thing that they're asking you to do if it applies mm -hmm. to that skill. Yep. Unless they're under duress, unless something happens. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it was it was it was definitely something that I first and it's weird to say that so many years into running games and everything like that, but it it, it was nice to kind of like have another like learning moment from how the game plays, and now I will be better going forward, hopefully. Um, and so, but I think mechanics wise, I, I you know I don't really think there was anything unique or different from how the game play uh, went throughout the adventure than what we did in in the mothership game. I think you know it was. You know, the, the skills made sense. It is a D100 system where you roll under, um, you know, and, and of course you get advantage under certain circumstances. You can get disadvantage as well. And criticals are doubles. If you roll a critical under your skill or you're under your attribute, then it's a double, that's a success. And of course, if you roll doubles over, that is a critical failure. And it's usually pretty catastrophic. Um, and so, I mean, all those were were fairly easy to do. And I don't think the dice got in the way of the game at all. I think it was very, it was very quick and very um very quick to move but yeah. in terms of like how the gameplay outside of this the rules and kind of getting into the setting i have to say that the imagining of you know nausicaa the valley of the wind turning that into a game setting that wasn't just nausicaa but on paper but very much influenced by the game i really liked the the things that they had done so even though it's only a 60 page rule book and it's you know, it's it's light in terms of like how many things they chose to describe. I really liked how the the game was set up. Um, did well, I convey because, that to you in terms yeah. of establishing the setting? <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, you did convey the setting, and I think one of the things that's interesting about this being game light is because you really like Nausicaa, you mm -hmm. can kind of fill in the gaps with your own stuff inspired by that as well. Mm -hmm. um, like for me, what it reminded me of um, is it reminded me of Troika and Acid Death Fantasy okay. um, with that more like like 60s, 70s Acid Death sci-fi sort mm -hmm. of vibe. Like, and I could see playing a Acid Death Fantasy game kind of yeah. based in a, a, a world like Nausicaa um, or world like what's presented in Cloud Empress. And I thought mm -hmm. that was one of the things that made it pretty cool to me. Yeah. Well, and it and it's and I mean it's it's a, for some reason you know I don't know what it is, but the the only thing that like it was it was um, the technology in the world is all over the place, and so it really is it's both concise in terms of how they define the setting, but it's also very freeing because it's not an overdeveloped setting, right? So even though you can use Nausicaa as an inspiration to kind of fill in your own gaps, like I did, and just how I imagined and portrayed mm -hmm. it to my players. But it also there was enough stuff so like i knew how the lordling should behave mm -hmm. in terms of you know like this kind of pompous you know kind of arrogant aristocrat that you know has powers ancient powers that they've kind of borrowed from people long forgotten the generations of stuff that were you know machines are kind of breaking down i mean i just i love that kind of like decay that happens over time because in this mm -hmm. world there was an apocalypse i would think um and as so, in most gaming worlds as, as in most gaming worlds and so you know you can kind of it, it's a, there's a lot of stories that you can tell around that or how you survive in it very easily um, no i think you i think you captured kind of weird uh class system and kind of the weird bug threat and everything mm -hmm. very well um in both the description of the game at the beginning and and as things were happening um mm -hmm. one of the most memorable points for me was the captain being like the hole in his chest with the like wires and stuff coming out of it to try and keep him alive. Like that was, yeah, uh, that was really cool. And that, that stood out. So, well, it was, and it was interesting because, you know, you're like, Oh, I'll be, a, I'll be a medic and you know, I'll just help anybody's injuries. And he's like, I need a checkup. And you're like, Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I thought, I thought that was kind of a, a an interesting component because it is. Uh, my character was the most fitting for the scenario. I think my character mm -hmm. was the one that, seem to fit the most so um i was happy for that well and and in case people are wondering like the, there are only four classes that you can play in the cloud empress base game there's a cell sword lordling courier and uh magician and you were playing the magician mm -hmm. um but then each of them get kind of a what, what would that be called like they get a loadout that no background you basically get, get a background and a in the background has your loadout yeah and so like 
in Brent's case, you were you were like helping farmerlings. Um, one of our other yeah. players was like a prisoner escapee. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> it was just like, okay, let's get them all together yeah. and all that stuff. Um, and I thought that was really kind of it was kind of neat. Um, in terms of the actual adventure itself, this is where probably some heavy spoilers are going to be, but I really liked the adventure. I think from a one shot perspective, it was just a nice, simple framework. It was a timer, you know, basically you did have, you know, your game was only going to last two hours unless of course you as a DM just decided to choose to let make it last longer. Mm -hmm. But your goal is literally to go from a cloud city to a, a farmerling town and just basically to send through the clouds to get there. And it's like, how do you survive when there are roles? And obviously you don't, you want to just, you want to tell your players you're going to be rolling at intervals. So even if they're doing stuff and, and everything like that, you're adding more tension and drama um, as you go. Now, in our case, uh, we did get the, um, the Imago right out of the gate. So the giant cicadas, like we got adult cicadas, like first roll right out of there. So all of a sudden the bean barge is listing and it has a giant bug on the front um, trying to get to their chalk engines, which was just, a great that, way to start an adventure that no one did anything about. Uh, I would like to throw that out there that no one tried to stop it from doing things. That's not true. One of our players did try to stop it after one more interval, um, <laughs> but ended up blowing, <laughs> blowing his up. hand up. Yeah. So, I mean, there was an attempt to do that. Um, but okay, you know, one, one attempt where one of the players had a gun uh and that mm -hmm. they did not uh, use against the uh the the cicada at all mm -hmm. yep and there wasn't really any exploration of i mean it, it was a fast scenario and obviously the players were it was hectic i would say that this scenario was good at creating kind of a chaotic situation mm -hmm. it was it was very and good at that. i would think that if you if you had players that were more probably metagamey together like they had actually designed characters with backgrounds that were probably more working together rather than independent you probably could have had maybe some a, a different outcome from a well-working team i guess it, if we would have talked more about us knowing each other maybe but our backgrounds didn't converge really well at mm -hmm. all no so it was it was having three individuals that were trying to survive a nasty situation as opposed to having a group of people that were traveling together that knew their strengths and weaknesses and i think that's what helped kind of enable the chaos to go unchecked for as long as it did uh, would that be a way to put it? That would be a pretty good way to put it. And also, <laughs> also again, our South Sword, the guy that was good at fighting, didn't fight anything. Uh, no, not at all. Didn't fight. <laughs> um, well, but as a cell Sword, he did go for a big cannon. So, you know. He did that. He didn't use in the game. You're correct. Yeah. So, so, and, and what's interesting about the adventure is that as you're going and you're rolling these intervals, like you're pretty much like you know. I mean, since there's a time limit, it's basically you getting to the ground. I, I have to say that my favorite part of the game was, and it was kind of shocking to me when Brent just kind of noped. <laughs> it was like, it was it was probably my favorite thing because he just kind of takes out a stick of chalk, shoves it in his mouth, and it was like him pulling a parachute ripcord as he cast uh, a levitate well, my, spell. My, my magician only had two spells, giant growth, which there was nobody fighting the cicadas, so I couldn't cast giant growth on anybody to fight mm -hmm. it, uh, or levitate. Um, which for a situation where you're on a boat that's in the sky and you're trying to get down, levitate seemed like a great option at the time that the engine stopped working. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so uh, once again, uh, Brent's character basically said, uh, I help those who help themselves and then just <laughs> floated above. Well, and ironically enough, uh, he actually happened to take and save one other life on accident. Like accidentally saved one other person, it was not one of the other players, but one of the other NPCs on on board. He saved um, twice. Oh. I saved that. I saved that NPC twice. You did because I, I also treated their their arm that was missing. Mm -hmm. So I think we should talk a little bit about magic because the the magic in the system is, you know, as we already discussed, uh, one of the things I liked about it was that even if you miscast, because we, we know how we said that the success la layers are levels are. It feels like you, have, in order to get a success, because I mean, first of all, if you succeed in magic, not only do you consume chalk, you get an after effect um, that, depending on the spell, you know, may feel like a light burden or maybe a heavier burden, depending on what it is. Um, but if you roll a failure, like you fail your heart roll, um, you actually get to roll on a miscast table. And there's actually, like on your miscast table, even, it gives you another chance. Like a one to two actually means you go, oopsies, I was casting it wrong. 
uh, I fix the mistake and cast it as normal. And then some of the miscasts are actually not bad. Like a three is you affect twice as many targets. A four is the effects potency is doubled. You know, so without using more chalk, you get more benefit to it. Um, but then, of course, on a 10, the effect occurs, but it brings something unnatural with it. You become cursed. And curses are just nasty. Horrible. <laughs> like, curses are just terrible in this game. Um, but it is, but it, but I, but, I, but one of the things that's neat about it is the spell that goes off. And as you're playing a magician, one of the things that they say is like all of your spells come at a risk. So, like, it makes a lot of sense. I don't know. It felt, it didn't, it didn't feel bad, mm -hmm. even though I lost an item and I miscast. And in this case, it was a beneficial miscast. Cause like I said, I took, I yeah. took somebody with me. You accidentally you what was it the task failed a task failed successfully like you know that's that's not what I told anyone I pretty much everybody in it, I, yep I did it the right way but yeah um, I took one the NPC with me and not even played a character so mm -hmm. yeah it, 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 we just rolled randomly but then you know the other players they did manage to find some escape pods and they shot out um, instantly no no one of the other players found the escape pod the other one did not. I just summarized, really. <laughs> one of the no, they well, okay. Let's be technical about this. Both players found the escape pods. One player went directly to the escape pods. The other player took a detour because this player took a detour, and they rolled a ten. It means they turned into tomato soup when they hit the ground. But they didn't. But they didn't because the game, uh, when you get a when you die for the first time, you roll a d10, and on a one to seven, you actually miraculously survive. You remove all damage and wounds, and you get a curse, which could be worse than the death itself, depending on the curse. Yes, yeah, but so that was interesting. But there were some. It was interesting in so much as that you know, like as lethal as the game feels, there's a lot of little weird off ramps mm -hmm. for stuff to happen. And I think in in Mothership, it felt like the game was just lethal, like you just. Like, like when you got a wound, you could die when you... <laughs> oh, yeah. When you got a wound. Like, we didn't really roll on the wound table in, the, in, in this, which I guess mm -hmm. I should we should look and see how bad that is. But, yeah, the wound tables in Mothership are bad. Like, my character was bad at everything after he got wounded. Yeah. Well, on a 9 or 10 in the wound table in this, like, it, it, it temporarily ends your adventures or you get a wound that kills you. So, I mean, that they could still happen. Right. But, but is it, was it like, do you have disadvantage on all your roles? Like, is that one of the, one of the table, like um, seven or eight? It, no, a seven, just a wound that makes you panic. Take one stress and make a panic check. And, and what's eight? eight? An eight is a wound that disturbs those who witness it. All nearby humans make a panic check, like humans in this case. Yeah, well, see, like in Mothership, I think I rolled a seven, and a seven is basically you have disadvantage on every roll you take until your wound is gone. Like that's <laughs> what happened to my that's what happened to my character in Mothership. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so Mothership is way more lethal than this game. But yeah. again, you're not like in this game. I know there's a thing about it not being for power fantasy to begin, but you're competent characters in this game. Mm -hmm. Like your characters that are good at the things that they're trying to do, mm -hmm. whereas in Mothership, you're you're just a normal person. You're not Space specialized. Structure. Yeah, you're not really specialized in anything. Yeah. Um, the advantage of being an android is you're tough. The advantage mm -hmm. of being a, a a soldier is you're tough, mm -hmm. um, and you get combat skills. But like you're not you're not good at everything. Um, and mm -hmm. if you're not you're not a soldier, you're not probably good at combat at all. Yeah. Well, and I, I can definitely tell you my character in Mothership was not good at combat at all. So um, so that being said, uh, Cloud Empress was huh. definitely a, it, like, it was a fun adventure to run. It was a lot of fun. It was a fun adventure to play. Um, I still have my gripes about some aspects of the Mothership system. And I, I think it's more that, you know, I mean, and the worst part about it is, is even though you just automatically do the things you should be good at doing, I still think rolling dice is impactful. And I just felt like, lot of failures even in this game which was seemed more generous with failures than mothership was um it just feels like the system has it just has low numbers uh, maybe I, it's I, just a balance i'm just i don't know i'm just i'm just used to i'm just used to rolling badly all the time so it doesn't impact me as much as a matter of fact i'm more impressed when i roll well like i did in this game i was like ah i'm i'm surprisingly capable of doing I'm things good at medicaling people yeah and but i mean it just like i said i figured out how it how it made sense to me as to how these roles would be impactful and stuff like that. But I still feel like 
you know, of the players that we had, like only really one person did anything successful. Everyone just, and everyone just basically spent the entire adventure slowly. <laughs> Until one actually did. <laughs> I I only took wounds. Uh, I only took hit point damage out of spite from the GM. So I don't totally agree with you, but yeah. Spite. <laughs> what? You, you levitated down to the ground for an hour and because every 30 minutes there was a roll, I'm just saying, that's why I had to roll. I mean, mechanically, my rolls were justified. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> he says that. But but needless to say, I mean, like obviously the, the your game in the last voyage of the bean barge could be very different than the next person's game. It will game be. It probably will be very different. Because it is a um, very free form game. Like there's the only structure is really the events that take place if the PCs are doing nothing and you know as the the warden describing everything you know going through i mean you you create a very flavorful very high intensity scenario that you know if you're lucky the bean bar just lands like that's that, it, that could happen i mean you could eject the chalk engines and have kind of a rough landing or something like that or you could take the escape pods and survive um you know or you could get to the scout top you know there's i mean again spoilers for all this. there's a lot of ways in which you can escape this scenario unscathed um or even save the the bean barge to have its last voyage be a gentle touchdown by comparison to flaming wreckage falling from the sky yeah. <laughs> so i mean it, 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 all those kinds of things can happen and i think if you played this with different groups you would have a blast each time as long as the people are just you just basically tell them to go and you know do stuff do stuff you know it's one of those games mothership and those games these these rules like games are very much games where people have to go out and do things like they have mm -hmm. to be proactive when they do stuff which is good for any game really mm -hmm. um but the rules like games especially they're ones that are going to make you want to do things yeah so now and i and i and like i said i think the game was a lot of fun i think we, our players like really got into the game um and it made it a very fast two hours for us very yeah fast. it was a good game it was a very good yeah. game so um would i recommend mothership and cloud empress if you want to give it a try, I'd say go for it. There's just it's just something that nags at me. I'm probably going to have to play it a few more times just to kind of like really cement what I like about it and what I don't. Because it's really, it's an interesting journey playing Mothership because I, I'm i not as big of a fan of the system as I thought I would. But there's stuff about it that I'm just, it's helping me grow as a player you know, and you, GM. You, Mothership, <laughs> is, Mothership and Cloud Empress by proxy are so simple that things dawn on you and you kind of learn from it. And I think that's mm -hmm. one of the things that are cool about the system. And I also think that's probably why it's so popular. Yeah. So, um, so it's been fun. So it, if you, and like I said, this is one of those nice situations where if you like the game, go out and buy it. And then there are additional adventures that you can pick up for, you know, money to support the, uh, the author and all everything like that. Maybe I can convince these guys to play one of the other adventures. So yeah, do all that kind of stuff. I'd play it again. Yeah. Great and time. my wizards and and my magician survived, so I can even use the same character with your three acid damage. <laughs> yeah, that healed. <laughs> so, um, so that being said, that being said, uh, I'm not a spiteful GM, um, but uh, you can find us. You know, let, let us know. Did you, have you played Cloud Empress? You know, have you played Mothership? What have you? What have, what have been your experiences? Have you enjoyed them? What have been your favorite components of these games? They're very popular. Um, you know, and I, I'm sure that they're very popular for reasons, you know, that we've kind of alluded to at least. So, yeah, let so, us know. so, so tell Mike why he's wrong at not liking them. Yeah. Tell me, I mean, I, I'm more than happy to, to be, uh, to, to help grow as a GM by people being like, have you considered this? Um, have you the... considered getting good scrub? Yeah. Get good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that feels weird as a GM context. Like, <laughs> Good story, bro. Like <laughs> skill issue. <laughs> that, that that could be true. I'm not gonna lie. I'm definitely no. Uh, I am very much. I am very much poking. I'm very much poking. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm all I'm saying is I'm not charging forty dollars a person on start playing. That's all I'm saying. You, uh, I think you could though. Is all I'm saying is really honestly, you probably could if you wanted to. It's either that or Uber driving. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so with that being said, if you want to continue the conversation, jump in those comments, let us know. Um, if you want to see us do these kind of videos, uh, just let us know what kind of games you want us to check out next. Or if you have topics you want us to explore in greater detail. We uh, love talking about games. We love learning about games. And uh, of course, we want uh, to kind of like get, you know, people that also 
like to do those things and kind of grow as as the hobby does because we're serious about this hobby we like it a bit well, and i can't say i'm not serious i guess i was gonna say i'm not serious but well i if mean you we're, if you if you look behind me i think you could probably say i'm probably pretty serious so i would i would say we don't take it seriously but we definitely treat it as though it's a serious hobby we like <laughs> it so much that makes sense that makes Is that sense. a real thing i think so okay. sure Fair enough. Uh, if you'd like to talk to us uh, somewhere outside of YouTube, you can find us on all social media platforms at Rollwise, Blue Sky, uh, the X Twitter machine thing, Instagram, threads, all of those places. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at rollwiseguys at gmail.com. And did you have anything else you want to add before I do the closing? No, uh, fun time. I hope yeah. to see you guys next time. Yeah, uh, please continue to join our conversations, join our table, and as always, roll well, roll wise, and be safe out there, everybody. See ya.